I would like to introduce you to Ricky Sandler. He is the CEO of Eminence Capital. This is an investment manager, principally in the equity long short business with about $7 billion uh, under management. Ricky, thank you. Thanks for having me. So one of the things we've been talking about here at the Milken Conference is the fact that hedge fund returns have been disappointing for most of the post-crisis period. And there's no question, there's a lot of hope that they're going to get better on the part of both the fund managers and the investors. The question is when and why. But first, before we get there, why in your mind have hedge funds disappointed? So, you know, I think um, a lot of this actually goes back to what happened in the financial crisis. Uh, prior to the financial crisis, hedge funds had the perfect construct of beating the equity markets and never having drawdowns. And so investors love that construct of, of upside capture, no downside risk. Uh, and good net returns. But, and good net returns. Um, on, and, and investors were in the business of taking risk, uh, hedge funds were in the business of taking risk and doing well at it. In the crisis, just about every hedge fund lost way more money than they or their investors thought they could. And the market was down 40%. It's a once in a generation event. And that so that changed the relationship between hedge fund investors and hedge funds. Um, what I like to say is half my investors looked at me and were aghast that I could actually lose 19% in 2008. Like, like it, it never was on the radar. The other half were, were happy that we only lost half of the market, right? And, and so the, the relationship started to change and I think um, many hedge funds began to listen to their institutional investors who would say, you know, um, you know, we can't have drawdowns that big. Um, you need to do a better job protecting capital. And, and, and the mantra on the hedge fund side began to, to, to be like, I won't let that happen again. I'll get out of the way if I see that coming next time. They became too careful, too they, conservative. In, in, in two respects. I think in one, in the way they ran their portfolios. So, so they ran with less risk in general. Um, and two, in the way they de-risked when things got choppy. And, you know, risk management after the market starts to shake is just like trading away alpha. Um, so, so you're selling your stocks because they're down, because you can't lose any more money. And, and that actually created a number of de-risking periods. And I think you know, the fundamental stock picking was OK, and the execution, both in portfolio management and in um, sort of executing around that. Is, is that changing? Do, do hedge fund managers on the whole recognize, that first, A, do they agree with you, and B, do they recognize what they have to do to change? I, I think it's I think it's different everywhere. I you know I mean I know I know for us um, you know we've always believed that um, we need to risk manage ahead of time, um, and so when times get volatile, you know the greatest opportunities come when markets get dislocated and 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 things become you, uh, you know unwound, and you don't want to be the guy unwinding into that. You want to be the guy picking amongst the rubble. Um, so so that's one. Two, running a real balance sheet. Um, you know we we run about 240 percent gross typically, maybe 130 long by 90 short. I think a lot of hedge funds run you know, 90 long by 40 short, um, not a lot of capital at risk, in an effort to control this volatility. And they're neither fish nor fowl. They can't keep up with the market if it goes up, and, and they're still 50% net long, they're not gonna protect capital. Why is it so important to be able to go short? Because um, you, the, the greatest value that we can produce as stock pickers is generating alpha between our longs and our shorts. If, if all we're doing is, is generating alpha on one side of the portfolio, you're, you're, you're actually hamstringing yourself. And again, this goes back to creating the right construct for investors. We want to be able to have equity-like returns and control downside volatility. The only way, to, that doesn't mean not lose money. The only way to do that is to have healthy shorts and then Use your long short spread, the, the, the return between your longs and shorts, as a way to keep up with the market even though you're less invested. Tell me a bit about your short business. So, what does it look like? Um, so um, we, uh, we run a, a diversified short portfolio of 90, 90 single stock short positions. Um, it's a lot. It's a lot. And, and the truth of the matter is, is um, one of the things about shorting is that when stocks go against you, they become bigger problems. And they become emotional also. So, the short position that starts out at 5%, that is up 50%, is now a seven and a, it's a bigger position. Your ability to actually, right, naturally when something goes against you and you still like it, you want to be able to add. You, you're, you're actually taking more risk without doing anything. 
The, the reverse happens on the long side. So if a stock goes down and, and you took a 5% position that went down 30%, you have capacity to buy more to sort of lean into the market. The short side's the opposite. And so running diversified allows you to sort of ride through that volatility. And, and again, part of the problem with the short, the short side is, is it takes a while for the catalyst to play out sometimes. And you've got to be able to, to, to stay in the pocket and, and maintain your short book while the, the short may be working against you if you still think you're convicted. And you pay your people differently for short alpha than for long alpha, hey, right? We, we, our compensation system has a number of different metrics, but, but short alpha in, in one of our metrics is, is weighted twice. We have two X. Two X, because they're half, they're half the position size. And, and so, you know, I want people to spend just as much time doing it. And so if each individual stock is gonna um, be, be smaller, you, you, you need them to spend more time doing it. So, so we want to compensate that. We also have a dedicated short team that only does shorts. So we have our, our research team of PMs and analysts that focus on longs and shorts. And then we have an independent short team that just focuses on shorts. They focus both on um, uh, sourcing short ideas um, and on adding horsepower to working on short ideas. And, and they come with a different mindset than the traditional analyst or PM who covers a sector, who understands the trends and the management teams and, the, and things. They tend to look at things from a generalist mindset. They look at accounting problems or frauds, fads, and, and things like that. Ricky, the other great debate in hedge fund land is about quants. Yes. You know, to, where does where does a quantitative strategy or quantitative expertise belong in a fundamental firm like yours? Um, so without question, so, so, so we about, about two years ago we decided that we needed to make an investment in quant and data science. Um, and and I, I couldn't be happy with how it's going. I think for us, um, at a minimum, we have to use the power of computers and the power of data to make our stock pickers better. Okay, that doesn't mean have a computer tell you how to invest, but when you can use um, a computer to analyze massive amounts of data, when you can buy data and, and analyze um, sort of credit card trends, and you can add that as an input to what you do, so your fundamental analyst understands both um, what the credit card data is saying, what um, the, the, we're crunching more and more analytical data to be able to add to that mosaic. So, so as a tool to the fundamental guy, I think it's table stakes, and I think you have to do it. And then, or else you're what, out of business? Well, like, I, I, think, I, th I think you're going to be at a huge disadvantage to people that are using human power augmented by you know, powerful computers. And so they're not replacing us, but they're making us better. And, and if, if you're not using that power to make an investor better, um, I, th I think you're going to be at a disadvantage. Since you're a long short guy, I have to ask you about the FANG stocks. Yes. Right? They have been emblematic of the market the past couple of years. Do you have a view? Um, so, you know, we, we tend to look at every stock, stock by stock. Um, we have owned some of the FANG stocks at various points in our history. Um, I would say we're episodic in them, um, which is to say that, uh, you know, we like to, to believe that um, we own stocks that um, are, are high, high in quality, have value, and we have a point of difference. So investor perception is, is our third pillar. And the truth of the matter is, is, when there's no debate around the FANG stocks, when they're just doing great and everybody loves them, it's hard for us to own. But when there's a debate, like there is around Facebook now, or there was around Google in 2012, we can be invested, um, because that's when um, research and, and judgment and can, can add value and we can actually have a different point of view. Does that mean you like Facebook or don't like Facebook, given the fact that, or where do you stand on the debate, right. I guess? Okay, so, so, so on the debate, we own Facebook today. Um, we've, we've bought it in the decline, um, and we believe that, um, you know, fundamentally, um, the, the, the power of the platform, the use, frankly, their use of data and analytics um, to improve the ROI on advertising is, is vastly under-monetized, um, and you're now at a point where, where Facebook on gap earnings trades at a discount to the market. So you can get superior growth, superior structural business at a discount to the market, and there's, and there's concern around, around the privacy debate, so, so you know, we, we, we think there's an opportunity. So in other words, when you, pick your, when you pick your spots, you can find value and growth. Yes. Ricky, Absolutely. thank you so much. Yeah, Eric. Great seeing you. Appreciate it, thanks.